So we're over to a chat and we're gonna, we're gonna make it over the west coast. Big River. It's been many, many years since I've been here, and um, remember, it's very, very bumpy all the way up to the old town. So it's gonna be interesting to see what today brings. Hopefully, it's not as scratchy as last night and not as hard work. Fifteen minutes out of Reefton, Big River is an absolute gem of a track up to a incredible historic area. This place just blows my mind every time I've been through here. You can definitely tell that it's been a very wet winter too. Heaps of the little streams are really washed out. This little, I don't even know what you'd call it, is probably the most complicated part on the whole track. Zero issues in a four-wheel drive, but if you do have like a lower slung vehicle or maybe an all-wheel drive, it could possibly cause a couple of dramas if it's wet. Be sure to keep an eye out for the mines dot along the side of the track too, they're pretty cool. Looks like these guys had a slightly less than successful trip into Big River. No idea what the story is, but I'd love to know. Basically in the um, Big River Township, 100 more meters to go. Very bumpy track, and like I filmed bits of it, but kind of once you've seen a few seconds of it, and it's kind of what the whole thing's like until you get to the township here. Super bouncy, super rough. Strap your things down in your boat properly. Yeah, so yeah, jump out, have a look at the um, old town. So I left the camera in the car, but I got my phone. So I've just come up to the hut up above Big River here. Look at that. Incredible view out over the valley and the river there. And come around here, you can see the old like, um, it's the entrance to the mine up there, the shaft. And you may not have to see it on camera, but at least in person, you can make out the tower. A stunning view though. All out over the hills and that's cool. And then like, coming into this hut, this thing's incredible. Uh, it sleeps so many people and like a nice fireplace and nice to see that it's in like, really, really good condition. Which I guess is one advantage of it being quite a hike from the um, car park down the bottom. Cool little spot. So yeah, we've made it to a campsite for the night. We'll see if we wander up to the hut and stuff before. Thought about like staying there, but I don't know. We've got everything we need here and it's quite a hike up there with the gear, so. We camp down here by the river where somebody has been fairly recently and there is a bunch of rubbish around, which is never cool. Yeah, take your rubbish with you. If you can bring it in, you can definitely take it back out again. So yeah, gonna get set up. There's a slight breeze, which is gonna be nice. If you dry out these tents after the last few days of um, rain and snow and some blue sky, so maybe we're gonna be in luck tomorrow with some sun. Be nice. Five days into the strip, four days into the strip. What are we now? Four days? Five days? Four days. <laughs> Barely seen the sun. <laughs> ah, never mind. There was no sun the next morning. This has been probably one of the more challenging trips in terms of 
I guess, the weather and filming. Like, it has been real tricky to try and get footage, especially, like, you know, my whole planning that I did before this to head up to Tekapo, like, you know, I put a snorkel on the truck, which, I mean, it's nice to have one, but I haven't needed it, even remotely. Yeah, it's just been a real tricky trip to try and balance, like, you know, finding somewhere it's not pouring with rain constantly and finding some interesting tracks. Like, it's absolutely fine, but everything's wet, everything's damp. Like, it's a little bit demoralizing, I guess. I don't know, just some real chat. Like, I know that these trips often look amazing and sunny and full of adventure and stuff. This has been that, apart from the sun, um, but it's just been that bit more work, I guess. It's part of adventuring. Sometimes things don't work out, sometimes you end up in completely different places than you planned, and it's all about making the most of it. It's incredible to see how much of the Big River Township is left. There is also a bunch of old buildings further up the line, but the rain came in straight after I took these shots, and we thought we should probably get out of here. Alrighty, first time using this new compressor in anger. Take it on. Let's go and um, pop up some tires. Leaving Riften, we pushed out over Lewis Pass, it's a road I've never done before, and towards Hamner Springs to get up into the St. James Conservation Area. It was a stunning, stunning drive, and I'd highly recommend that route over the island if you're in the area. Alright, drops me out of the tyres. How good is this place? Hope you can hear me out with this wind. Turning up into the valley. I don't know where we're going just yet. See if we can find this road into this hut. Um, otherwise, Lake Tennyson on a cold, windy night. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is cool. I've always wondered why like, it gets shut further up in winter. Looking at the snow on the hills, I, I now get it. It is, unfortunately. I forgot about the winter factor when um, we thought that could be an option. Uh, I just wonder, eh? Yeah, never mind. Um, I guess we push on, unless the weather's looking too terrible. Three degrees, apparently. I hope we're making the right decision. So, um, slightly less than ideal conditions up this far in the valley. So it's pretty special, we've just turned off the main, main road, you can call it that, and um, heading into Lake Tennyson itself, and like, you guys will look out the window, there's wheel tracks, and not a lot else, heap of snow. It's going to be a cold one tonight, but fingers crossed, I don't like my chances, fingers crossed it's not going to get windy. Alright, so we've made it up to Lake Tennyson, and ho, 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 how incredible is this? And amazingly, we're not the only ones who are crazy enough to be camping up here tonight. There's someone sort of tucked over in the hills there, so... Oh, man. I'm gonna grab some more shots in the morning, like, it's pretty, it's getting pretty dark now, but... We made it. This is awesome. I don't have words. This is kind of, um... I don't know. This is what I thought we'd be doing kind of down Tekapo, except way for the north now. Anyway, I'm going to finish setting up my camping stuff. Sort of grab a few quick shots before the light fades completely and... Yeah, Lake Tennyson. Back here again. Except this time, it's snowing and not like bone dry like it gets in the middle of summer. What do you reckon, Mr. Ash? Thanks. Very cool. Beautiful 
surrounding us. Can't complain really. Worth the drive in, eh? Yeah, I think that's a nice drive in too. Yep. Ooh, she's um, fresh out this morning. Got about negative six inside the tent when I woke up before. This is probably one of the coolest places I have ever woken up. I, I, I don't have words to describe it. I um, got up at about 4 a.m. this morning to take some more star photos, so I took a couple for bed and all right. And then 4 a.m. this morning, like the spin around, the um, stars were kind of over the lake there, like throw a photo up. And, but yeah, this is pretty awesome and it's it's real weird like I've been warm enough all night long and getting up and like everything's frozen I can't get into my boot at the moment it won't open Ash can't get into his canopy all the locks are all frozen up like the ground's completely solid that's pretty special between the pouring rain and the negative eight degrees overnight everything was frozen shut it made getting the morning coffee quite a lot harder than it needed to be Come on, let me in. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yeah, there we go. Give me a normal boot any day of the week. Bit of extra work than summer, for sure. But you know, flicking on the light this morning and wondering what the sparkles were on the inside of a tent roof, um, realizing it's ice, and then <laughs> progressively finding everything is ice closed. Um, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, it was a bit of work though. Last night was pretty wild and wet, um, but to wake up to this, it's pretty hard to beat. Leaving camp on the final morning is always super hard. There was a snowstorm coming in, and we knew we had to get out of here before we got trapped. It was an incredible drive out. We made one final push up towards Jolly's past, back into the deep snow again and headed over the hill. It was a pretty stunning drive and it was so cool to see how much snow was around. And that is a wrap down in White's Bay at the moment. We're gonna head around Port Underwood as kind of final thing, but um, the tree down across the road, so here we are. This is the end of the line for this trip. This trip has been a little bit of a whirlwind. It's been one of the more challenging ones of the weather, but also super epic and super rewarding. Like, I've never camped or done a trip like this before in winter, and man, to get out here, do this, see the snow, camp in the snow, and see the South Island in winter, even when, like, you know, the weather hasn't really played ball and when all our original plans are out the window. But that's what this is all about. It's about exploring and making the most of whatever situation you end up in. I've been super impressed with all the gear we've been running on this trip. Like, you know, the weather has pushed heaps of the stuff to the limits and like between the tents and the awnings and 
the red out gear, like keeping like electric blankets and things going, like it's been awesome. Um, we've been using GME radios this whole way through and they have performed faultlessly. And like, you know, obviously we both basically did a bunch of work just before we came down. Suspension is very similar between the two trucks and that stuff has just worked brilliantly. So, you know, I've been so pleased with how this has worked and everything has gone relatively smoothly for a, for a trip where, you know, we're finishing things off basically the night before we left. Huge shout out to Ash from Kaiserworks for joining me on this trip. It's been awesome having like another vehicle just to be able to push into some of those places where I might not have gone solo and for his support and like getting, you know, the Fortuner ready to go and stuff. Really, really appreciate it. Check out Kaiserworks AFN if you need basically any other gear you can see on, well, either vehicle to be honest. Please remember to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe. It really, really helps our channel grow. And if you're into Patreon, like Patreon basically semi-funds these trips and helps us get out here and make more content for you guys to enjoy and you get behind the scenes access and everything first and like basically you know all of this content comes out you know a bit in advance before it does on youtube instagram facebook all that sort of stuff and yeah it basically means overland and zed can grow also remember to check out navigator navigator pro all the tracks that we've done all the way on the south island are all on there all the campsites um i will check together an itinerary be in the link in the description below and that'll basically be the list of everything that we have done anyway thanks heaps for watching have an awesome rest of your winter and hopefully see you out there on the tracks. Catch you later.